what rattles your cage? What shakes you up? What are you afraid of or worried about? What gets your goat? What just kind of bugs you and you go, ooh, <laughs> that you have to worry about or you get kind of like, uh-oh, now what am I going to do? I mean, is it like a, a knock on the door? Don't answer it. Pretend we're in the bathroom. Is it, uh, open up, it's the police. Is it, oh, I don't know. Is it like getting a letter in the mail and you go, oh, I owe $10,000 to the IRS. I know in my day, it was like, oh my God, I've been drafted. <laughs> well, oh well, what shakes you up? You get that phone call that says, uh, remember me? You said I was a good sport. <laughs> well, no, that's not something to be joking about. But what really shakes up your peace? What causes you to kind of lose it, you know? Cancer? HIV? AIDS? Suddenly discovering that your husband doesn't love you anymore? Your wife doesn't love you. They committed adultery. They fornicated. They fell down on their face. Your president didn't work out the way you thought he would. Your prime minister was a jerk <laughs> and corrupt. What really shakes you up? What has really got you worried in this day and age? Jesus raptured some people and left you behind? Does that shake you up? Really? Why? Would that be something that maybe you couldn't handle? Maybe that is something that is just too much for you to deal with. What if? What if Jesus left you behind? What would you do? Go out and party? If Jesus left you behind, would you suddenly uh, think that you'd done something wrong and go, oh, I'm in sin. Let me add up my sins and let's see. He didn't know about that one. He didn't know about that one. Let's see. Oh, yes. The sum total of my life comes up to be 0 0.0001. And there was one sin I didn't confess. Oh, bummer. Really? Would you lose your cookies over that? Being left behind by Jesus? I don't know. I wouldn't. Why? Well, everybody has this idea that they know what God is going to do. But, we all pray, thy will be done. So, I don't know about you, but if God left me behind, I would think there's something he wants me to do. Or, there's some reason. I would ask, seek, trust. I would still trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not in my own understanding and all my ways acknowledge him and walk with him. Would I go out looking for the Antichrist? Nah, he'll come along. He don't need me to find him. I don't think he's lost. Would I, uh, like, you know, go out and start a church? Well, I don't know, you know. I might pray about it, see what God has to say. So, for me, if God left me behind for any reason, I don't know that it would change my life at all because my life is in his hands. I trust in his plan. 
I don't lean in my own understanding. I recognize that maybe he's got the whole world as well as eternity planned out. And that maybe my understanding of the rapture or some areas that are kind of, eh, you know, gray for me, or maybe they're not so gray, that maybe I'll be right. And of all the churches listed in the letters to the seven churches, six of them were left behind and one of them went. And I wasn't it. I was right. So I got left behind. Oh, praise the Lord. Hippie skippy, I was right, but that means I was left behind. Bummer, dude. I wish we all got a free ride. Instead of one-seventh of the entire Christian body. Dude, those aren't good odds. Or are they? Hmm. So, I guess, for you, if you got left behind, you'd freak out. Maybe you'd kill yourself. That wouldn't call. That wouldn't accomplish anything. Maybe you wouldn't want to go through tribulation. Or maybe you'd sit down and count the cost of what it means to be a Christian. Because the reality is living for him or dying for him is not the point. Being with him is the reality of what a Christian is. If God is with us, then he will never leave us, nor forsake us. And whether he take the bride away or leave some behind, the point is this. In the book of Revelation, there are those who were told that they would not go in the snatching away, but rather he blessed them if they would overcome. What shakes you up? What makes you lose your peace today? What makes you fearful or worried about tomorrow? What if, what if Jesus came and left you behind? Would you lose your salvation or faith or realization of a personal relationship with Jesus? Good news, he cares for you. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. 1 Peter 5.7 I have noticed in recent years that many of the Lord's people, not just ministers and missionaries, tend more and more to become a nervous and harried people. I don't claim to know everything about it. I only claim that there is a hope and relief for the children of God in these terrible days. For Paul wrote to the Philippians and said, Be anxious for nothing. The peace of God can keep your hearts and minds. How are we going to escape fear? when there are legitimate dangers that lie all around us. Here's what the man of God says. Don't be anxious, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, someone who is able is looking out after us. The Bible says he cares for you. Jesus our Lord says, your, fathers, your father knows what you have need of before you ask him. And Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. And in all your afflictions, he was afflicted, the word says. Remember that peace of heart does not come from denying that there is trouble, but comes from rolling your trouble on God. By faith, you have the right to call on one who is your brother, the Son of Man, who is also and happens to be the Son of God. And if he's going to look after you, why should you worry at all? So really, the bottom line is, if Jesus is Lord, and you are willing to say in the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done, then what do you have to fear? For it is God's will is done. So what can you say if Jesus left you behind? Praise the Lord! <laughs>